information, but just before we do, I'm just going to refresh your memory on the particles found in our um our soil. So you've got gravel, coarse sand, fine sand, silt, and clay. And clay isn't even the smallest soil particle. You've got colloidal clay, which is smaller again, and colloidal humus. Um, the second thing that we're going to look at here just before we start are cations. And here you see you have a number of cations, aluminium, iron, calcium, magnesium, hydrogen, potassium and sodium. Now you all know from maybe your own farms at home that you would provide iron in the form of licks. You might put calcium or lime onto your ground uh, as a top dressing or you might Put it in uh, when you're reseeding a uh, ground um so you've all you're familiar with some of these cations so to speak so just to start the process of flocculation we're going to take the smallest particles we're going to take the colloidal clay and the colloidal humus and what happens to those is there's chemical reactions in the soil cause these colloids to become negatively charged and here you can see that i already have included the negative charges on the colloid these cations that we discussed earlier are attracted to the negative charges, much as you would see in a, a magnet when the negative end is att attracted or sticks to the positive end. And they are, the key word here is absorbed onto the surface of the cation. So they literally stick onto the surface of the colloid. Um, so you've got calcium, you've iron, magnesium, they're stuck to the surface of our colloid. The colloids then become linked together by polarized, polarized water, and this is known as a flocule. So you've got chains of colloids and the cations adsorbed onto their surfaces that are attracted to each other and stuck together in chains. And this makes them bigger um, and makes them into a flocule. Now these flocules then, um, which are just basically the colloids their cations and the polarized water then are big enough to trap um, sand particles, as you see here in orange, and silt particles, as you can see here in clay. And this is what is known as an aggregate or a ped. I have it as pet, but it's known as a ped. I'll just change that. As a ped. And inside this aggregate, you can see small spaces and they are known as micropores. Now, capillary water found in these micropores is unavailable to plants. But when you get these crumbs or aggregates together, they form groups of aggregates, but they have in between them things or pores called macropores and the capillary water is available to plants in here. So I just want to take a look at these macro pores for a little second and just draw your attention back to a good soil structure where you would have 45% uh, mineral matter, 5% organic matter, and 25% uh, air and 25% water. And this is where your 25% air and 25% water comes from is these macro pores. And they allow gravitational water to drain away. Um, they supply water and oxygen to roots for respiration and also for uptake uh, for photosynthesis. Hi everyone, today we're going to show flocculation in a soil sample. So let's just get through the equipment first. Um, I have a clay sample here that I just grind down in a pestle and mortar. I have measured one gram of the clay soil sample out. I have a graduated cylinder with 100 centimeters cubed of water in it. And then I have another graduated cylinder because I'll need to measure samples out of 10 centimeter cubed out of that. And then most importantly, what chemicals are we going to use today? So before we use the chemicals, I just want to show my test tubes here. I have my control. 
I'm going to be using one centimeter cubed of 0 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. And I have that already in the test tube and measured out. I'm going to use one centimeter cubed of sodium chloride. And the sodium chloride is 0 0.1 molar. Um, and then I'm going to use aluminium chloride, which is ELC, ELCL3. And again, I have the one centimeter cubed and I have my test tube labeled. And then I have one centimeter cubed of calcium chloride and the calcium chloride is 0 0.5 molar. And again, I have one centimeter cubed of that already in the test tube. So what do I do first? Once I have everything set up, I take my 100 centimeters cubed of uh, water and deionized water and I'm going to add in my one gram of uh, clay soil. Okay, and I'm just going to shake it and invert it. This is what I get. Now, I'm just going to go down to eye level and I'm going to measure out 10 centimeters cubed of this. So now we place the 10 centimeters cubed into the control of our clay soil. And I have some prepared already. 10 centimeters cubed into the, of the hydrochloric acid, 10 centimeters cubed into the sodium chloride, 10 centimeters cubed into the aluminium chloride, and 10 centimeters cubed into the calcium chloride. And we put the stoppers on each and shake. And we wait five minutes. So after the first five minutes, you can see the control has settled a good bit. The hydrochloric acid on par with the control, if not a wee bit clearer. The sodium chloride. The aluminium chloride is not working at all. And the calcium chloride. And we'll leave it for another five minutes. After 10 minutes, control. Hydrochloric acid. Sodium chloride. Aluminium chloride. Calcium chloride. 